Hello, it's been a while since I last did a devlog explaining what I'm working on for KDE Plasma, but it's not actually uh, like I stopped developing, kind of, because I had exams, but not completely. I'm still doing stuff and I think I'm almost done with a new merge request and I want you to see it. And it is still the merge request about panels, about rewriting panels. And it's been like this for months, but I'm almost done. I'm almost done, which is good news to say the least. Now, what has slowed me so much down is myself, unluckily. Th that has to be said. You need to know that a lot of time ago, I had implemented this blue line that you see around the elements. This is called margin areas, and it's a cool feature, which I don't regret you know, implementing at all. However, what I do regret is implementing it wrong. I mean, not wrong, but the code is kind of ugly, and you know, I'm my worst enemy. And uh, so I'm rewriting it. So what, what was wrong? Uh, let's address it. So how this worked is that every time you moved an applet, like dr drag and dropping an applet like this. Now, every time at every single frame, you, I would call a function which is called uh, update margins. Now, by the way, if you see some flickering, some elements disappearing, that's because of the screen recording. It's not KD Plasma, I'm sorry. Now, what this function does, update margin, is see the first element and give it a small margin and move on. Second element, small margin, move on. Third element, oh, it's called margin separator. So we actually need to uh, switch to the next margin, which is big. Then this element is big margin, this element big margin, and all of the way until the end. So all of these elements get big margin, all of this small margin. And this was kind of necessary. I mean, every time you move an applet. However, that wasn't an amazing idea, especially because these elements, this blue line, were actually destroyed and then completely recreated every time I called update margins, which means that at every single frame you moved an applet, all of these QML elements were destroyed and then recreated from scratch. Now, this has almost no impact whatsoever on performance and battery because drag and dropping applets is such a rare scenario. However, it could have been better and uh, it resulted in flickering. How did I address it? Well, you could say that from a technical point of view, uh, like probably from a performance point of view, my solution, my new solution is not much better. I think it's, it's a bit better, I think. What happens now, instead of creating these elements uh, that are like super long, Look at here, look at the bottom right. So you've got this blue rectangle that stops here and goes from here. This is not like a custom shape. It's actually a rectangle which goes from here to here. Now, what I was doing is I was doing some super hard mathematics to actually draw a single rectangle, just one, which is this one. What I do now, which is much, much easier, is that each applet drones its own rectangle. So here, this applet here, the show desktop, draws a little bit of a rectangle, and then the system tray draws a little bit, and then this applet draws a little bit, and then this applet draws a little bit. So what you see as a single rectangle, well, it's actually five which could be not amazing for performance, I think, because I'm doing five camel elements instead of one, but in theory, it shouldn't be an issue and it's so much easier to actually implement this. Let's actually quickly, quickly give a look to the code to, to see how it's implemented. Now, before, before my patch in made.qml, I had a super long function with, with, to just calculate how to do rectangles. Now, what I do is that I take this element, which is called the applet container component, which is an applet, just the QML element around the applet. And down here, I've got this item, 
this item it doesn't have a name if it had it would be i uh, know actually it does have a name it's just in the wrong spot it should be here it's called the margin highlight elements and it contains four elements four rectangles why four okay let's go back to see the panel why four okay so most applets actually just have two rectangles which is the one at the top the one at here as well the one at the top, the one at the bottom. However, there is the margin separator, which actually requires four elements, which is a rectangle at the top, rectangle at the bottom, triangle at the top, triangle at the bottom. That's four elements, two rectangles, two triangles. So how are these defined? So we've got these four elements and this one and this one, they're called fill. Now the fill element of the margin highlight SVG is a rectangle. So that's how I'm drawing a rectangle. And then there is top right and bottom right, which are the triangles. And to actually draw them, well, it's pretty easy. I just have to mess a bit with margins. So what I do as an example, let's take this rectangle as an example. What I do is for the top, just go as top as you can. For the left, go as way left as you can, for the right go as way right as you can. And then for the left margin, actually go negative. So you need to extend over your borders by how much the row spacing divided by two. The row spacing is the spacing between the elements. So by taking that spacing and divided it by two, well, you get the right amount of spacing to extend and make it look like it's uh, just one rectangle through all of the applets. Same thing for the right one. For the top margin, we actually need to go negative that as well because we do have some margin at the top. And what I say is that just remove that margin. We've got dot margin, which is this variable here, get margin top, just go negative on it. So we actually remove it. And for the height, then we use the height of the margin, simply enough. Now there is a couple of false true which you can see documented in this function, sorry, this function. And it's just about making sure that we get the right amount of margin. Don't worry about the details, but uh, it's actually pretty easy. Now, another thing I implemented is if you right now open up the panel, oh, actually this is funnier. Let's say this one first. Even though this code is amazingly perfect, Sometimes I still had one pixel that was not covered by any rectangle. So I had this rectangle, this rectangle, and there was just one pixel in between, which was so annoying because I thought I had done everything perfectly. And I kind of did, kind of. And what do you do when you kinda do everything right? You round. So what I had forgotten about doing in here, I was missing the math.round. So the width of the elements was like, it's 45 pixels dot two, four, seven, eight. And that two dot, uh, what did I say? Two, four, seven, eight, zero dot two, four, seven, eight, eventually added up to be one pixel. And that one pixel was not covered by anything. I just had to round the, the width. That's it, That that was literally it. Just by rounding the elements, everything went fine. Thankfully, I didn't lose too much time on this one. It could have been worse. I was prepared for worse. What else? Okay, so another cool one. So you know that if you go into edit mode, you've got this pop-up, which is icons only task manager. And if we move the mouse here and wait, it disappears, which is pretty cool, isn't it? Now, what's the issue? If you've got this pop-up and you move the mouse and you move the mouse away, before my rewrite, the pop-up wouldn't actually disappear. Why is that? Why is that? That was very annoying. And thankfully I fixed it. The idea is, so you've got the pop-up and that makes sense. And the code said that if the mouse leaves the pop-up like this, then you wait for a couple of seconds and then you close it. But the code didn't say anything about the mouse leaving the panel. When the mouse left the panel, nothing happened. So how did I fix this? 
So le let's see how that translates into code. We've got here what's called hide timer. And the hide timer, which is defined blah, blah, blah here, is a timer. It lasts, I think it's uh, 2.5 seconds, something like that, maybe less, I don't know. And when it's over, when the timer is over, we set the current applet to be nothing and that actually makes the, the pop-up disappear. Now, to make sure that the pop-up disappears, we need to start the timer. And this timer was started here. This is the main item of the dialog. So we've got the dialog, which is the pop-up, and inside of the dialog, we have when the mouse exits the, the area, then you restart the timer. Okay, this didn't work. What was missing is in the panel, which is this element here, I also needed to add when you exit the panel, you also need to start the timer. Actually, it's restart. I don't know the difference, but it was restart down there, so it should be restart here as well. And uh, that was it. That was literally it. And that fixed it. Then another thing. If you right now go into edit mode in the panel and uh, you start clicking elements around like this one and then this one and then this one and then this one like this, what you will notice is that Sometimes there is a bug. So maybe let's say you click an element like this, just clicking it and then releasing. Sometimes you will see that, whoops, sorry about that. Sometimes you will see that it does like this. Whoa, 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 whoa. And I was like, what? So what's the issue? So we've got an element and when we start drag and drop in this element, behind the element, we add a replacer, which is empty. As you can see, there's nothing behind the element and it's just as wide as the element you're drag and dropping. So it's a fitting replacement in theory, but it didn't actually work. Now, this is something I had already lost hours on already and I thought I had fixed it thanks to the help of some people too, I think, uh, months ago, I don't remember anymore. Yes, I, I think they suggest, the solution was suggested to me. I didn't find it by myself. So I was like, oh no, here we go again. What was the issue? So let's go see the drop-in replacement that we have, which is called placeholder. Now, the idea is that we had a layout preferred width to be the width of the element. The code was like this, layout preferred width is the current applet if we have a current applet, then it is the current applet width, otherwise it's zero. Okay, what's the issue here? It's very hard to catch actually. So the idea is, let's remove this code uh, just, for the, just to show you why this is wrong. So what this does is, we've got the current applet. This current applet has actually three different widths. It's the preferred width, the maximum width and the minimum width. The preferred width is the width that you would like to have. Maximum, minimum is, you know, maximum and minimum. So uh, it uh, when you add the current applet to the panel, the actual width of the panel might be none of those three values. It's just the actual width. You ask for thought, maybe I give you something more, maybe I give you something less, depends, depending on the context. And here, I do the right thing to actually ask for the width. Because if I asked for the preferred width, I would have literally no guarantee that this is actually the width of the current applet. Because preferred only means that you would like that width not that you actually get it, but the width property is the actual width. So where's the issue? It, is, it was still wrong. And now, of course you see it because there's code down here, but the idea is that I'm setting the width of the applet to be preferred width. So the placeholder is saying, please, I would like to have the same width of the current applet. And that doesn't mean that it will actually receive the same width just like the preferred width of the current applet doesn't mean that it will actually receive the same width. So what was the fix? So to make sure that the placeholder and the current applet's current applet behaves exactly the same, all I had to do, let's revert all of the changes, was to say, okay, so we've got all, 
all of the three values let's uh, stick to with right now so uh, sorry let's stick to these three values i actually would like to have the same width that the current applet would like to have i have has a maximum width the same maximum width that the current applet has and i have the minimum width to be the same applet the same width uh, minimum width as the current applet does so instead of messing messing with the actual width of the current applet, we don't even try to have the same width because it would be impossible to tell uh, the layout I want exactly this width. I just say I want the same width, I want the same maximum width, and I want the same minimum width. And these three things combined actually make, sorry, actually make it. It does work now. So it is better. Hopefully it, it will even get better. Like there are some things remaining. And if you want to help me out actually do these things, then please do a donation because it really helps both in improving my channel, which I spend a lot of hours on, and also working on KDE, which I also spend a lot of hours on. And that's a lot of time. So if you want to reward the times, uh, the time that I give into these projects, a donation is very appreciated. And uh, about that, I gotta really say thank you to all of those that did give me donations because it really helps. I, I think I say this sentence every time, but I mean, it's true. What do you want me to say? Also, subscribe, that sort of stuff, put likes. I mean, you've probably closed the video by now, right? See you tomorrow.